Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to How to Build a Game Studio. I am Trevor Oz, and I'm joined today by our uh, programmer extraordinaire, Jack Steele. What's up, guys? And uh, and another guy who works here, Kent. Hello. I'm not getting mad. New year, Trevor. New Kent. Yeah, new year, new you. Yep. That's new true. year, less less anger. No, I got a lot of anger. Yeah, we'll see about that. Directed one, elsewhere. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. <laughs> It's what is it directed towards the lack of sleep? Uh, yeah, right now it's directed towards a rendering issue that I can't freaking fix. Uh, that's uh, that's the life of a game dev, right? Driving me nuts, yeah. And then it'll be directed towards, I don't know, peanuts. Peanuts, man. Yeah, you gotta like break them open to get to the good stuff. It's bullshit. Yeah, it just pisses me off. I mean, <laughs> you know they sell peanuts. them without the shell, right? You can... Trevor, you're just talking crazy now. They even, like, you know, roast them in different varieties, like honey Stop roast. Stop and... making stuff up, Trevor. <laughs> no, we don't live in this fantasy world of yours. <laughs> okay, well then. Now that, <laughs> now that we've established Kent doesn't know about the, the peanuts they sell at the grocery store. Um, I guess we can get into, uh, so we've been a studio a year. Yeah, happy anniversary, a little over. Yeah, a bit over, a bit over a year now. It's been a, it's been a long year, I would say, for all of us. Um, but things are shaping up. We have, uh, we're starting to come up with a, a game that actually is a game and playable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, at some point this year, I don't know exactly when yet, but we will reveal our game, unless something horrifically catastrophic happens. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's pretty much where we're heading. Um, we've had a, a a slow part of the year, but that's just because of uh, you know, you can you've been a bit busy. A bit. Um, yeah, I guess I haven't been on a podcast since the baby came, have I? No, you haven't. Yeah. So, so uh, I got I got one. <laughs> so you got some baby. How how's so. how, how's getting a baby going for you? It's cool. She's uh she's pretty awesome and she's kind of getting like when you first get a baby they don't do anything they just kind of lump around but now <laughs> she's like is laughing about stuff and like smiling and kind of starting to play a little bit so that's pretty awesome. Uh but yeah they a lot of energy and a lot of. A lot of time and a lot of poop. So that, that's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sums it up. <laughs> Babies in a nutshell. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Uh, so I, I'm sure that's uh. So how's it how's it been like for you trying to juggle doing work with with a newborn? It's a heck of a lot more difficult. I mean, it is as difficult as I expected. And a heck of a lot more difficult than I'd hoped. Like Genevieve, honestly, has been doing a pretty big chunk of the work, especially with like feeding the baby and everything. But even at even the times when I am working, like when I am able to work, it can be tough because if I hear the baby crying or something, then it's really difficult not to like run upstairs and be like, "Oh, hey, do you need help? Like, what's up? How can I?" Or, you know, even just if Genevieve was like, you can work, you know, take your time now. It's, you know, in the back of your mind, it's still like, all right, well, I'm working. But Genevieve is also right now solo taking care of the baby. So that is difficult to kind of separate work and uh, work and personal responsibilities. So I've been doing a lot more kind of random night hours so like after Genevieve and the baby go to bed which used to be like my schedule used to be work during the day spend a little bit of time with the family in the evening and then play a little bit of games at night before I went to bed but now it's more like when they go to bed I'll pro usually jump on for a couple more hours to kind of try to get in and catch up with a little more of the work that I lost during the day from random x y or z happening so my gaming time is a little less than it used to be. Or, honestly, often I will game anyway, and then I wake up, and then I'm really grumpy because I haven't had enough sleep. 
chug a couple energy drinks and go back to work. But yeah, it's tough, but it's also pretty cool having a little girl. And I look forward to like when she grows up a little bit more so we can start hanging out. That's awesome. It's awesome to hear. Congratulations. Yep. It was not a massive mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so Jack, what's up? Uh, you haven't had any kids, but uh, but I, that's I, true. I, that's true. I know we've talked in the past on the podcast about you know going to school and all that. Are you still uh, taking courses right now? Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, winding down my last year now. I'll be done by the end of this year. Um, uh, but I've been doing it, juggling all that for a while now. So I've gotten into a pretty good you know routine of balancing the whole work work school life balance (laughs) i am going to assign you so many tasks once school is over it will make your head spin (laughs) can't wait postgrad is gonna be a blast (laughs) um are you so how, how do you feel about about school right now um are you still learning stuff is the stuff you're learning still has any of it applied to the stuff that you're doing for Winterborn yet? Uh, applied to this, um, a little bit. Like a lot of it, uh, has just been mostly just about like helping me with learning how to balance everything. Because there, I mean, there was one course I took uh, late last year where in the course there a span of like two months. And within that time, I had to work with a team to basically create a whole, like, a whole game. I mean, they provided you with, like, a few different sort of, like, wireframes of the game. And basically, you and your team, like, took a part of the game and just built the, built the game up from there. Um, so that one was, that term was a little crazy. Uh, balancing, like, all that workload along with everything else. Uh, it was a little crazier than other classes, but um, it did. It still did teach me a lot, uh, as far as like in uh, in that game, I worked a lot on like building out a skybox for a game, which is uh, something coming up that we're gonna need to do to apply to our game at some point. So there are definitely bits and pieces throughout each course that, as I learn it, I'm like, oh, and then we have a meeting later. I'm like, oh, this uh, this could definitely be useful coming up. But that's awesome. It's awesome to see like that stuff that that you're just now learning, being being able to apply elsewhere. Right. Yeah. It's good to see that it wasn't all for nothing. Right. Yeah. So it, it's actually like, well, this school actually did make sense to do. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of times, like I know at least for me, at certain points when I went back to school, it was like, man, am, am I really going to use any of this? Um, so it's it's cool when you do have those courses that are like, yeah, I think I will use this. Right, yeah. And I mean, there's definitely still, I definitely do still have classes like that. Like right now I'm working on like a project management class that's just all about like managing tasks and timelines and stuff. And I'm like, listen, I'm I'm fine with with that part with all I've had to do this year. I Get me back to some of these other courses. But, but yeah, those are much fewer and far between than the courses that I can actually take and get something from. Yeah. At this point you're just like, Hey man, I need to manage my timeline with Winterborn. Right. Get all these tasks done. (laughs) So we can, uh, we can actually show off and release a game sometime here. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be Uh, nice. It's coming. Yeah. We're, we're going to be able to show it off, uh, soonish. I know, uh, for those that don't know, we met up back. What was it? October or November when we, all were together. Yeah, it was right. I think it was back in November. Yeah, it was. It was close to. No, it was even later. It was uh, because it Moody was there into the new year, because he played uh, the game with us, the tabletop game. No, that was last. That wasn't year. this past year. That was the year before. Oh, last. Oh, yeah, last year. The was one that we like just did. Yeah, not like long ago. October or something. It was pretty yeah. early in the year. I think it's October. That's that's when we we hammered down the name for the game, which we which we're not ready to reveal yet. But um, we did get to sit there for two hours and and heavily <laughs> decide what we wanted to call our game. 
I still say that is the hardest thing in game design is coming up with the name of the game as well as the name of like characters. <laughs> Luckily, we yeah. have a bulk of them from you know the original tabletop version. But even now, when I come up with, you know, we still we have to fill out a few characters here and there that didn't exist in the original, or we have to tweak some things around to make more sense kind of in the digital version. But it's still really difficult not to just be like, yeah, this guy's Billy, or this guy's Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Which, for those of you who don't know, I can't remember if I mentioned this on the podcast or not, but like, I don't know, 60% or so of people in the original tabletop version were named either Billy or Jimmy. And basically, anyone who was completely unimportant that was just coming in for a short time that I didn't bother naming would just be Billy or Jimmy. So I have to not do that. But I'm going to have at least one Billy and one Jimmy in the game. It's yeah, they've got to be somewhere. Probably you have to Billy have a, Foreman. I have to have the homage yep. there So for sure. Um, so yeah, yeah, naming is definitely the hardest part, especially when you're looking at like everything else that's out there and it's like you like for us, we had a list and we're just going through this list. And it's like, well, that sounds too much like this game or um, how it's, it's one of those things where this will sound like too much like a, a game or something that like that doesn't make sense for the game, uh, et cetera. And I mean, there were a ton of different reasons why we chose not to name it this or that. I do remember, I think our runner up title was like, it was neck and neck between the current title and kind of the runner up. And then, if I'm not mistaken, the runner up was there was another game that had announced another indie title that had announced like, what, two or three weeks? Yeah, it was not long that, before. Yeah. Which that's had right. almost the same name. And we we're like, oh, all right, well, it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guess what? We're not yeah, just it settles it. That name. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what's crazy about it. It's it's weird sometimes the the parallels you see like in the in the games industry where it's where you have something even like as small as a name or even just like genres how you see like a bunch of games pop up with the same genre almost at the same time um even though like independently of each other. Oh yeah, that happens all the time and like one of the things that always made me both laugh and also kind of groan is when that happens a bunch of people will release usually it's whoever comes out first and then you know a couple months later everyone's like oh they just copied that game and it's like yeah that game was in development for three years yeah exactly they didn't just go oh hey look at that game that released let's quickly make another one like poof there's a game right it's just there are trends because a lot of the designers follow the same kind of like pop culture what's happening you know trends in gaming trends in movies trends in comic books and a lot of it leads to the same thing or variations of the same thing so you know it's kind of hard to when they're basically trying to predict what people are going to be into and what they want to play there's a lot of overlap it's it's just hard to predict what everybody else is going to do because there's so there's so many at least at this point there's so many devs out there doing stuff that like you can never predict that someone's going to come out with like an, an exact type of game that you're doing like 2 weeks before you if it just comes out mm-hmm. so that's uh that's a that's I think that's a big challenge for uh any game coming out at least in the indie space. Yeah, if you don't have, I mean, especially for anyone who does not have an established kind of name or brand, like, you know, us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, even if, you know, even if someone were to, that exact thing, same thing were to happen, at least some companies, if they had some brand recognition, then they won't immediately get dismissed out of hand versus it'd be really tough on indies to come out you know with something two weeks after somebody else and have no name recognition and then just immediately face that internet hate wall of oh you just copied them yeah when obviously like if it was easy to copy games like that like hey man (laughs) it's it you'd see a lot more of that happening like you'd see i mean you 
you kind of you almost do see that on a mo on the mobile games level because mm-hmm. uh, you do see a lot of clones and copies on that level right because um, I, I don't know why it seems easier to copy that those, those type of things but maybe it's just the way they're built but it you would see a lot more clones if it was that easy for something to you know come out like a couple weeks to a month later but really uh, a lot of a lot of these games are like in planning stages for years and there's no way that they could have known um, that they were going to release around the same time. It just happened to just happen at the same time. So, um, so right now we're working to actually get our game to, to a state where everybody else can play it. Um, what how challenging has that been for you ken exceedingly challenging (laughs) it's really tough because you know there's so we've been working on the game for a while and it's been roughly playable for a while and there's you know there's definitely been a lot of instances even even really really early on where we've been able to go like oh yeah this is this is starting to shape up to be fun or like oh yeah this will be a cool idea when we when we can you know, kind of finish this chunk of functionality or, you know, things along those lines. Um, But like kind of, you know, you only get one first reveal. Mm -hmm. So it's this really difficult balancing game of like bringing the game out. We want to obviously bring the game out early. We want to show it to people. We want to talk about it. We want to get feedback. We want to get people excited. But we can't have a bad reveal so we have to wait until like things are really really polished up to the level we need to be them at to because we can't just go oh yeah well we know this one thing looks particularly bad but that's because it's just temp art or temp code or something like that like we're we're gonna get to that don't worry about it um so yeah trying to get that exact kind of perfect balance between it's done and it's not done like it doesn't make for us anyway it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to wait until the game's almost done and then reveal it where you know but if we did then the first reveal is going to be great because hey it's almost done it looks great everything's close to finished but if we released it you know when we had our first playable i don't even remember when it was sometime last year Mm -hmm. then it was just like oh well that game looks like crap no one's ever going to give that a second look so I, I think the plan that we kind of, the exact plan for the demo that we planned out, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, whenever we sat down and did that, is a pretty good balance. And I think we'll showcase enough of, you know, kind of what we're hoping for the game, enough to play. You know, we, I don't want to give anything too specific out, but yeah. there's there's a, there's a little bit in there to play with and kind of get a feel for the game. So that's nice. We're showing off several of our kind of key features and kind of the core gameplay. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's enough to get people excited and kind of uh, paint a strong picture of what the final product's going to be um, without kind of like showing our entire hand at this point because we don't want to show everything, especially the stuff that's still early in development or the features that haven't come really online yet. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it, I, I know that presents a unique challenge for you and, uh, and the rest of the team uh, working to make sure to get that polish in and it. And I know it puts a ton of stress on Moody because he has to do a lot of art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Moody has a big chunk of this because, you know, obviously the, the kind of visual aspect is massively important for our kind of first reveal. And so you can't really hide what things look like. You know, if I need to, I don't think this will be the case, but if we get close to kind of our planned demo uh, date and I'm unable to get a piece of code working properly, I can basically hack it together just for that demo, which is a pretty common industry thing to do. Um, But you can't really do that as much with the, the visual parts like what you see is is the art so moody, there's a lot of pressure on moody right now 
of course, if it's all visual and there's no gameplay, then that also doesn't present a very good demo, so he's not the only one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, I I think we all... (laughs) We're all feeling it. I mean, especially, I would say you, you Jack, and Moody are probably uh, feeling it the most. How about you, Jack? How are you feeling about things? Uh, Pretty good. Yeah, we are uh, ramping up a lot, getting into a pretty uh, stressful time, but there's a lot to do, but... I am really happy with what we've put together so far. And I think anyone who's like seen little bits and pieces, uh, the reaction has been pretty overwhelmingly positive. So uh, I'm really excited to move forward with it. Yeah, I'm excited uh, to have the chance to show it off, hopefully, uh, soon, at least sometime uh, this year. So... Um, that's that's what I've been waiting for is to finally be able to show right, some stuff yeah. off and be like, hey, I swear, guys, we're working on stuff. I really, I, you know, that's that's pretty much because I, I know I'll, because uh, uh, <clears throat> I have like some friends and stuff. If I go out and I go to like the library and stuff that that work there, know that I'm working on something, and it's like, yeah, we're we're doing stuff. We can't really uh, talk about it. And I can't really show you what what's going on, but uh, yeah, but it's happening. But it, it's happening. It's a thing. It's real. It's all a practical <laughs> joke. <laughs> Surprise! Real, I swear. We don't really have anything. <laughs> um, I know, Jack, you've been working a bit with uh, Boo on like the putting the sound in the game and to, to go along with the animations and stuff. How is that? Has that presented a challenge for you? Right, yeah. Uh, I've just been working with him a lot. Basically, he's coming up and generating all the sounds like we just play through we've just been playing through the game uh we've been on a lot of calls just playing through it identifying like different pieces like all this this is a clearly another like action or feature that we need to add something in or work on the timing or uh just you know it's been a lot of just iterating on different things and refining it um along the way and then just uh he just keeps pumping out music different music libraries and i pull them in and uh, plug them into wherever I need to in the game, and uh, it's coming along pretty well. There's a few uh, headaches along the way, but uh, we're working pretty well on it. Nice, nice. That's good to hear. Um, but yeah, it seems like uh, it seems like but yeah, it's going pretty well, and I really like the sounds we have in there. So. Yeah, for sure. So that's that's another aspect I can't wait to show off too. So um, is his great music and effects that he's been working on. Um, so with that, um, that I think that that wraps up a bit about like the studio part. Um, I hope you're all getting excited as you will see some sort of game uh, in the sometime in 2020. Um, but otherwise, uh, Jack, have you been playing any, any games? Uh, any games recently? Um, yeah. I played through Jedi Fallen Order, at least most of it, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, I didn't expect it to be, like, going into it, I hadn't really seen much about it, and I didn't expect it to be the, like, soul style, almost, but I was pleasantly surprised with that. Um, uh, other than that, I've been, uh, watching Mel actually play Subnautica. I don't know if you guys had played that, but that game really impressed me. It's an awesome looking game and just the way the story progresses is really good. Yeah, I, I tried to play it, but it, I don't think it's my kind of game. Um, I'm just not into that survival thing, but I think right. watching someone else do it. I think would entice me more than actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played the game myself, but I would still recommend it to people. It looks like a lot of fun. You'll have to tell Mel to start streaming it so Trevor can watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's it's like I I think the concept of it is cool and like the like it looks good and there's a lot of cool trappings. It's just like any survival type game, I'm just like not good at. So yeah, they're not really my style either. 
You've heard it. Trevor cannot survive. <laughs> no, no, he can't. I was not meant for that world. <laughs> Trevor uh, needs his electricity and fast food drive throughs and, uh, you know, Grubhub delivery it is the only way for Trevor to survive. Pretty much, yeah, or else I'm dead. So, <laughs> so once, so once, uh, once global warming wipes out all modern amenities, I'm screwed. So, goodbye, Trevor. I will come to raid your house. Yeah, I bet you will. How's that Although reassuring? Anything I have will be useless. <laughs> it wasn't meant point. to be reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be a warning <laughs> for my roving band of marauders. Um. Have you been playing anything interesting, Kent? Uh, I haven't had massive amounts of time recently with the baby, but I did finally uh, pick up and start playing through uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is I'm really, really enjoying. Like, uh, as as per normal, I'm playing it on the ridiculous hardcore <laughs> mode. Naturally. So it's like, you know, my character will walk up to some random peasant who gets mad at me <laughs> and even though I'm wearing like full armor and a shield and a sword I'll go toe to toe with this peasant who has nothing but his fists and he will just beat my ass just punches through knock it. me unconscious <laughs> and leave me for dead and I'm just like hmm okay that sounds so like a blast it's very slow going but um yeah I I always enjoy the kind of extreme difficulty but uh, yeah, the gameplay is just enjoyable. Like the 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 I don't want to say the world is unique because it's kind of like you know meant to be historically accurate. But I guess the the simple fact that it is kind of a more realistic medieval sim is uh, is really unique. Like you know, it's it's rare to be playing a game like that and not be able to go, okay, well, I'm going to wing a fireball at this guy now. To... <laughs> so it's been pretty cool to kind of just be playing a little differently than the normal style of games that I would be doing there. And uh, I think that will keep me occupied for quite a while, considering there's a lot of content and I'm only able to play it in small chunks. Yeah, yeah, I would say you'll be busy with that one for a while. Um, no, knowing the amount of time that you have. Uh, I just won't stop sleeping. <laughs> well, sometimes you sometimes you don't need sleep, right? As long as you can get those adrenaline shots and just shove them in my chest. <laughs> we'll just probably uh, get that on Amazon. We'll just put. We'll start. Uh, we'll start getting you kickstart IVs. <laughs> Might as well with the amount of that stuff I drink already. Because I, I assumed it was Kickstart, because that seems like your uh, your energy drink of choice. That's kind of my 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 go to like that's my my daily energy drink is Kickstart, and then if I need something a little stronger, I'll switch it over to a Monster or something. I even bought powdered uh, like instant coffee now just to have a backup in case I run out of energy drinks. I don't <laughs> really like coffee all that much, but I have it just purely for the caffeine factor. Damn. <laughs> nice. I also got... It'll be like Jack know, the, next. The, the, like, squirt flavorings that you can put into water. They apparently make those with caffeine in them now. So they I got do. a little thing oh, of those. There you go. Just, so I got all, cut, like, stashes of caffeine all through the house. So I can just... At any point in the home, reach over and grab <laughs> something that has caffeine in it. Ken, Ken is a, a man that setup. knows how to stay awake. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> have you have you been have you played anything else recently? Uh, that was kind of the big one. Um, I did play uh, a Plague Tale. I think between the last time I was on the podcast and this time, a Plague Tale Innocence, and that was another. That was a really good one. Um, yeah, just like the, it was really impressive what they were able to do with a you know smaller team. Um, like it pretty much felt like a triple A title. Um, I 
I have no idea what the actual budget or anything was, so I don't I don't think it was considered triple A, but that's already kind of a murky area, like what there's no definitive what is right. and what is not triple A. But I I'm pretty sure it was a much smaller team and budget than but it definitely felt that good. Um but yeah, it was one of my one of my spoiler, it is in my list for top ten games of last year so yeah, don't which, be surprised we'll be talking about next week yeah don't be surprised when i bring that up but yeah it was really good and not not that long which was nice because like i actually managed to do that kind of in very small chunks while the baby was asleep so that was uh that was a good one yeah that's uh it's it's kind of weird uh at, at a certain point when you i think almost when you hit a certain age at times you're like man i wish games were shorter yeah it's funny because like if i had nothing in my life like that kind of ate away at my time all i want is these huge epic 200 hour games like witcher or you know elder scrolls like i just want to be sucked into a world and i just want to stay there for huge amounts of times but then with work taking away a little bit like family friends baby like then all of a sudden you're like oh hey I can't finish those. Well, I say that, but I, I find ways. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I will beat Kingdom Come within the next two months. <laughs> you just won't have any sleep. Yeah, that, that'll probably happen. Yeah, yeah, that's it's usually how that goes. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think for me... The I would say the most surprising game that I've gotten like way too into recently is Legends of Runeterra. Oh, nice! How is it? It's really good, and I originally started playing it because uh, last week on the podcast we had Rachel Williams, uh, who is a, a narrative uh, writer on that game, um, and I was <laughs> I was like I'm gonna check it out um, and see how it goes. Um, but I probably won't stick with it because you know it's it's a card game. Um, I don't I ha- I never played League of Legends, so I don't have a ton of attachment to the characters, stuff like that. Um, but I play it and it's really good and addicting. Um, I like a lot of the stuff they do is is nice. Like you get experience from playing against the AI. The AI is actually pretty good. So there are times when the AI will surprise the shit out of you and just beat your ass. So, and the and the AI matchups are completely randomized. So like it it might be you know a deck that's uh, just gonna kick your ass or just like you know a deck that you'll squash. But it's uh it's super well done. They have uh, an expeditions mode, which is almost like a like going to a card shop and doing a draft, um, where you basically you get like a token, uh, and then you spend the token to uh, essentially deck. Um, you pick uh, the champions that you want at the beginning, and then you like each round of picking. There's like cards that go with the champions, or or there's wild cards stuff like that. So like it's it's actually really cool and interesting the way that they did that, and then they give you uh, basically two shots to like make a deck and go on this journey of facing other actual real life opponents um, in this. And you don't lose until you've lost twice in a row. So like, you know, if there's a hang up and the the deck doesn't quite work or you just have a bad draw, you still have another chance of going. And then basically, however far you make it up the ladder, you get more rewards at the end based on that. But it's, it's really, really well done. And I've been enjoying the hell out of it. Did you make it all the way to the top yet, Trevor? Have you no. been the ultimate champion Did you do of the ranked? world? No, I've I've done. Uh, I usually do pretty well on regular like PvP matches. Like I'd say, I'm probably like fifty fifty for wins and losses. Um, but like, I've not done too well in the expeditions mode itself. Um, I've maybe I I want to say there's like seven tiers and I've made it up to like the third tier maybe. Um 
so I haven't done like crazy well. Um, but I've done a little bit of ranked, and the little bit I, of ranked I have done has not gone well. well we have, so. <laughs> That's pretty standard with most games anymore. Yeah. So, but other than that, I mean, it it like it, it's that it has daily quests and stuff, and so I mean that kind of like fuels my want to go back to it every day. Right. Um, at least play it for a little bit. It's it's a lot of fun. I, I would definitely recommend checking it out because it's free. It's a pretty good price overall, I think. Definitely. Definitely worth it. But uh but yeah, I think uh I think with that that pretty much wraps us up for this week. Um Yeah. We're caught up for twenty twenty. Yeah, we're caught up. We're we're getting ready to uh to show you guys a game here sometime in the next few months, um, down the line. Uh hopefully. Yeah, unless, hopefully. <laughs> unless something <laughs> terrible happens um and and that all we can guarantee is 2020 yes there's a lot it's a busy year so sometime in 2020 that will happen so we're uh we're balancing both the work of making the game and also the whole this is a big year for announcements and we can't afford to get lost in uh you know yeah that's the thing i mean it's (laughs) new consoles like New games, uh, yeah, making sure not to, not to you know sit in between those and be like, oh well, the Xbox just got announced. Let's announce our game. That's probably <laughs> not a great idea. Day and date. But you know, uh, luck luck be to us that the day that we're set to announce, they'll be like, hey, we're gonna announce the Xbox that day. Yeah, that's pretty much our usual launch or run of uh, run of luck. We'll announce. The Series X will announce PS5. Sega will be like, "Hey, we're we're getting back into the console business." <laughs> Dreamcast 2. <laughs> yeah. Jesus will come back. Uh, let's see what else. I don't, I'll be I like, don't... but we're making a game. <laughs> yeah, but also, don't forget, <laughs> yeah. I tried oh, to God. insert some random pop culture, but I just realized I don't know a single pop culture thing <laughs> happening right now. <laughs> So sorry about that. They'll they'll surprise release an Avengers movie. It'll be crazy. There you go. There's your pop culture. There you go. Yeah, good job. (laughs) There are Marvel movies. Ken's best (laughs) pop culture was Jesus is coming back. So (laughs) I think Jesus. That would be pop culture if Jesus came back. I I suppose so. Yeah. Hey, it's two thousand years (laughs) in the making, man. Big news. That would shock myself and others. <laughs> man, I could just imagine the internet when that would happen, though. It's like, you know, people would be like, man, I thought Jesus would be taller. Picture it would like... happen. I just tried to look on, like, a news site really quick for pop culture, but then I remembered it's an election year and all the news is stupid bullshit. Yeah, bother. Yeah, God, not... I can't wait until 2020 is done. Let's not get into any of that. Um, no, no, no. Uh, with that, uh, yeah, that's it. Next week we'll be talking about our favorite games of 2019. Um, so uh, look forward to that. We will have lists. You can compare your list to ours and hate us for not liking your favorite game as we like our favorite games. And uh, and with that, uh, you can find uh, Kent's on Twitter at what is your Twitter, Kent? Uh, Profession L. Kent. Yeah, Profession L. Kent. Because Professional Kent is too long, so I took out the A. Oh, nice. <laughs> and uh, you can find Jack at MF Tank Beast. And I am at Trevor Oz. And if you have uh, questions, concerns, or any of the like uh, about the podcast, you can email us social media at wintermorngames.com. And we would like you to do that, and we will answer those questions on the air if you actually send us any questions. That'd be cool. Um, and uh, thanks for listening. Yeah. Come to think of it, no, we've actually got show requests, but we've never gotten a question. That's true. I did not. I expected it to be the other way around. That is true. Send us a question. It can be something stupid. It can be like, Kent, what what type of shoes do you wear? And I'll answer. 
But if no one sends that question, you guys will never know. You'll never know. You'll never know the answer unless so, you ask the question. So, there you go. There's so some incentive. <laughs> Social media at winterborngames.com. Um, <laughs> it's your place for the hard-hitting questions like what type of shoe <laughs> does Kent wear? Important news. And 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 maybe, maybe, just maybe, me and Jack will tell you what kind of shoes we wear too. Never know. Not a Let's chance. not go overboard. I'll take that to my grave. <laughs> I think uh, we wear anyways, the same type uh, of shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trevor, I know, Trevor, you do because uh, you, we had the same pair of shoes. Yeah, literally, like, <laughs> uh, it was so weird. Like, we ended up buying the exact same pair of shoes the last time that you <laughs> bought shoes when you were back home. Yeah, you only buy shoes when you're back home. That's why you guys go to the one shoe store. <laughs> In all of Steubenville. <laughs> That's true. Hey, man. It's a sweet shoe store. <laughs> it is a sweet shoe store. Shout yeah. out to the shoes. What, what is the name of the I actual I think it's the store? shoe department. The shoe department. Shoe department. Poor Steubenville Mall in Steubenville, Ohio. <laughs> See, it's I the only know. shout out they get. <laughs> yep. I hope. If you're ever in Steubenville, go there. Yeah, please do, because the mall there is dying. Who knows how long they can last. <laughs> They still uh, they have the cookie place. I get cookies and shoes every time I go there. <laughs> yeah, what more do you need? <laughs> Not much. That's pretty much that, that's the building blocks of America right there. So they also have putt putt. That's a sweet mall. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, yeah, you you got me. They they got all the amenities. <laughs> all right, sorry, I derailed this conversation a little. You bit. did. All you right, can take us out now. All right, thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week.